Dude, guess what? Dude, not chicken butt. But I'm actually about to get some electric blue day geckos here soon, and I'm super excited. So that means that it's time to make another bioactive build. Now I'm gonna transform this into this, and I'm gonna show you every step of the way. My name's Ryan, and you're watching Mighty Morphin Reptiles. Let's roll the tape. I'm gonna start off this build with a nice sleek Exoterra that goes by the dimensions of 12 by 12 by 18 inches tall. Let's get it. With how small this vivarium is, I was faced with some challenges, so I had to cut up several pieces of spider wood to make it fit. For the beginning placement points of my first hardscape pieces, I had to rely on several pieces of tape to hold it still, and then I used silicone, glue down the anchor points, and had to wait for it to cure out. And then I repeated this process again with another piece of spider wood on the side of the vivarium this time. I selected spider wood for this vivarium build because I found it to be the most optimal for the gecko's needs. One, it was small. Two, it had a bunch of branches and it would maximize climbing space for the gecko. All right, now that I got the silicone cured out, it's time to make the background with some expanding foam. All right, I usually wait about two hours for one side to cure out before I begin working on the other side. All right, now that I have my expanding foam cured out, it's time to use a knife to carve it out so I can apply my media to the walls. So in case you didn't know, the reason why we have to carve off the smooth surfaces of the expanding foam is because if we try to apply our media to it while it's smooth, then it will not stick. But once we carve it out, it becomes porous and that's when our media will be able to stick to it. And clearly we want to cover up those ugly walls. And with how small this vivarium is, I wanted to make sure that I got as much room out of it as I possibly could. So I carved it down to a half an inch thick max. Oh, look at that. Me crawling into tight spaces, just the way I like it. If you know what I mean. All right guys, I'm finally done with carving, but I still have quite a few pieces of wood to use. And the reason why I didn't want to put it on first before I did the foam was because I realized if I had these in already, that would be such a pain to carve all the foam off. So then I decided to use the super glue trick, a little more expanding foam, and a lot more love. And then I decided to super glue another branch of the sharp jagged edge, and this allowed more climbing space. Yeah, I like it, definitely. And then I added this tribal looking piece of spider wood to the back left corner and I applied it down with some more expanding foam. Then with this tree branch right here, I decided to place it right here and it really just made it look more like a tree with some actual flow. Yeah. Now I'm faced with some new challenges of all the expanding foam in the really tight spaces to get to, so I use a rotary Dremel tool to carve it out. Only took about 45 minutes. All right, for my media I'm gonna use for my walls is Dry Lock Extreme, and then I'll be using black cement coloring to mix in to get the consistency of color that I want. And then before applying my media, I decided to use plastic food wrap to cover all of my spider wood, as it would be a real shame to go through all that effort just to ruin that wood. And as you're doing this, just wrap it up as you would see a donut at the gas station. I love donuts, by the way. Then I pour my dry lock onto the background. I then use a paintbrush and spread it around everywhere nice and evenly. Then I wait about two hours before I apply a second coat. Once I'm done applying my dry lock, I take off all the wrapping on the branches, and then you'll see right here, I did make a mistake and got some on the branch, but it's an easy fix if you have a rotary tool. So I just use the tool and just slightly dremel it off. All right guys, I'm gonna be honest with you, I really just don't like the plain gray look along my walls. So I'm gonna be grabbing some wash place sand and I'm gonna be sprinkling it all along my walls. And since the dry lock is still curing out, the wash place sand will actually stick to it as it cures out. This will give it a lot more of a nice richer texture to it. All right, do you guys see what I mean? It just looks so much better. I just love that actual like grainy texture to it. I believe this will actually give the gecko more climbing friction, even though they got pretty good sticky toe pads, but I'm not gonna lie to myself, I can still make this even better. So I grab some black acrylic and I'll be painting black all along inside the cracks and crevices. I'm gonna give it that shadow look.
But yeah, do you guys see what I mean though? Just the black, the sand, and the dark gray, it all just contrasts and complements each other so well. I just love how it just looks so much more naturalistic than it did before. And it really goes along well with the branches too. But all right, I'm excited for the next part. So now we're onto the drainage layer. This is where I typically use Lika clay pebbles, but I decided to stray away from that and try something new. I'm gonna be using filter foam, and this is gonna be way lighter than Lika clay pebbles. I quickly take some measurements and I cut it to fit. Then I place it right in the bottom and I have it to only about one inch thick. Then I use window mesh screen as a substrate barrier. Then I put in my substrate up to three inches thick that consists of orchid bark, sphagnum moss, and organic potting soil. All right guys, now to the best part, planting the vivarium. All right, I'm gonna be using this cute little palm plant. It doesn't get very big and I think it'll be really great for the geckos to drink off of. So I decided to actually split it up into a bunch of little pieces and then plant them all along the sides of the vivarium and along the back side. So it kind of gives it like that little archway to it. And this cute little plant is called Begonia Rex, and I love the pink and red veins under the leaf. And I'm gonna be placing it right here in the back right corner. It'll add really good contrast to the actual vivarium, and the adult geckos should be able to climb onto it easy as it establishes. Then I'll be adding some leaf litter to the vivarium. This will give it that nice little extra texture. All right, I wanna add something else in there besides the leaf litter on the bottom. And I realized that I still have some spider wood left over, so I'm gonna be using these guys as botanicals. All right, this cute little plant is called Pilea depressa, and I love the little baby teardrops look to it. I'm gonna be placing it right here in the middle of the vivarium, and it'll make an excellent ground covering plant and spread throughout time. And I found another piece of wood that I forgot about, so I decided to hot glue gun it right here in the corner, and I think it's a great idea. Don't judge me guys, sometimes I forget. <laughs> I then looked inside the vivarium and thought to myself, how could I make this better? And then the idea came to me. I'm gonna use these really cute Talensias, and I'm gonna use a hot glue gun and apply them to the walls. And even as pretty as it is now, I feel like it still needs something to help blemish it all together. So I use Spanish moss and I apply it to multiple places using floral wire. And for my microfauna, I'm gonna be using springtails and these guys will be great for eating the mold, algae, and fungus. With the combination of orange powder isopods and these guys are gonna be great at breaking down the gecko's waste. And before we move on, we need to address the elephant in the room, this hideous background. And we're gonna cover it up with some vinyl paper. All right, let's add the geckos now. Alright guys, it's been a few days now since I put the geckos in here and it's been so much freaking fun just watching these guys jump around and just be so freaking playful. And you know what's also really cool? I've actually got these guys to start eating nectar off a skewer for me. Even though these guys are a really shy, sketchy species and they're only really a display animal, I'm still gonna attempt to try to build a bond with them. I mean, just look at him. He looks so cute eating that right there. I just freaking love it. Oh, and you guys wanna know something funny? I actually had to play cat and mouse with these guys three times. They're flighty little rascals, so you gotta be really careful when opening the cage with these guys. And also, for the lighting, I do have UVB in here, and I'm using a ZooMed Reptisun 5.0 T5 linear lighting. And for the additional lighting, I typically use aquarium lights for my plants, but I totally forgot to get one for this vivarium ahead of time, so I had this Exoterra canopy lying around. Then I put in a 6500 Kelvin LED bulb so that should totally suffice for this vivarium and also I gotta mention there is no additional heat lamp bulb for these geckos is because the breeder that I got them from recommended that the UVB light actually produces enough heat for their basking if you get the branches close enough and their basking they need is 85 to 90 degrees and you'll be able to see it right here with the laser temp gun so that is pretty freaking rad and if you guys want to learn some fun facts about these geckos and watch me unbox them then check out this video right here or if you guys want to see me make more bioactive builds then check out this playlist right here. All right guys, my name's Ryan and you're watching Mighty Morphin Reptiles.